building a very small Lego boxer engine. So this idea originally was a little bit different. I wanted to make a very small one cylinder solenoid engine. And here I'm playing with the idea. To challenge myself, I decided to make the entire engine on just this red plate. So not much space to work with, but I think I can make it work. The basis I have here is already uh, very small. Uh, I just need to fit a uh, cylinder and all the other guff on there. My first idea for the cylinder was to use the uh, original uh, magnet construction that I made for the big solenoid engine. But it's fairly big, so I'm kind of hesitating. Plus this entire construction, uh, I don't think it's gonna fit at all actually. But then I got a different idea. Instead of using a crankshaft with a connecting rod and a cylinder, I could do something else. I could use two vertical pieces around the crankshaft, which would move back and forth together with the crankshaft itself. Put two cylinders on there, and I had have a pretty compact engine I think. Also excuse the shoddy camera work here, not sure what I was doing, but I was not paying attention, that's for sure. So here's the first iteration of that idea. Two cylinders on a shaft and of course two vertical pieces around the crankshaft. Uh, this works pretty well, it's very smooth as well. Now I lucked out a lot because these magnets I'm using actually fit perfectly in these Lego wheel pieces. Uh, so yeah, perfect. And here's the coil from the big solenoid engine. Um, I'll have to take this one apart because I can't use it. Its diameter is uh, way too large and um, yeah, it won't really fit on this engine. Look, it's way too big. So I'll need to make two new coils from this old coil. So just as with the uh, big solenoid engine, I'll be using cartridge strips again. Here's one of the uh, bases I already made. I'm test fitting it. Yep, perfect fit. Now I really don't feel like doing this all by hand again, so I built this little thing. It's uh, some sort of well, automatic uh, coil winder. It uh, has a little crank which I turn, which turns the coil obviously. And then a little crankshaft uh, construction which uh, moves the wire back and forth. So it's pretty neat. Not the most professional setup obviously, but uh, it works really well. So hey. And here you can see me winding the coil in uh, fast forward. Look at me go. Wee. <laughs> And here I'm testing the newly made coil on the engine. Yeah, it fits pretty perfectly. Uh, it also fits between some Lego pieces, uh, which is kind of coincidence. I didn't actually uh, take that into consideration when I made these. Anyways, now I'm gonna make a second coil for the other cylinder. And uh, then the uh, annoying work is done. And after some more winding, here is the second coil on there. So that's complete now. And it's running pretty well, it's very smooth, and uh, the clearances are nice, so yeah, feeling good about this. Now no engine is gonna work without a set of valves, well, unless it's a Stirling or a thermoacoustic engine. So here's my idea. There's a little cam on the crankshaft behind the flywheel here, you can just about see it, it's the red thing. It pushes the two rods, which rotates these two valves. Now I just gotta figure out the contacts. Now I forgot to uh, actually film the process of designing the valves, so apologies. But here's the final result with the new valves on there. So yeah, essentially just two contact switches controlled by those push rods you saw earlier. And that's it really. So, time for the first test run. Well, I'd say that's running pretty damn well. Except it doesn't anymore. Hmm, something weird is happening. The engine won't run at all now. 
It's a bit hard to see, but uh, the two vertical pieces I used to uh, wrap around the camshaft have actually been pushed apart due to the force of the cylinders. So I'll need to find a solution for that, otherwise this engine won't run for very long at all. And here you can see I've pushed the uh, two vertical pieces back in their place. But how to keep them there? Well, both cylinders push inwards, so if I put a few Lego pieces between the cylinders and the vertical pieces, they'll always be pushed into place really. Uh, so this should work. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> I just need to keep it in place. It's uh, quite a violent engine. Well, I've taped it to my desk with some double-sided tape. Let's let it run for a while and uh, see what happens. Oh. Well, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> uh, it's still running though. Uh, <laughs> well, it seems I uh, have to uh, figure out how to fix that problem. Well, instead of a flywheel, I just added a uh, pulley. So I can drive stuff. Let's see how that goes. And then another weird thing happens. The engine was just uh, sitting still and I was typing on my computer and suddenly pop! This magnet decided to uh, well, commit Sudoku. <laughs> so yeah, I'll have to replace this. Uh, not sure why it happened though, I guess it already had a crack and all the uh, violent movement was making it worse until all it popped apart. Luckily I have a couple more, so here's the replacement. Well, time for another test run. Unfortunately the engine was starting to have issues again, but this time it was the valves. Uh, I need to make them a little bit better, I guess. Yeah, it's not very consistent. When it works well, it works really well the engine, but after a while uh, I think the metal pieces in the valves start to bend and well it doesn't work that well anymore. After some readjustments, the engine started running well again. See, there it goes. So, I'll just shut up now and I'll let the engine do the talking.
So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe, of course. And I'll see you guys next video. Goodbye.